It was March 14th. Driving on 565, one of the sheriffs told me that his son is a police officer and that he had gotten the call that there was a ladder on 565. I remember thinking, you know, okay, I don't want to run over this going 70 miles per hour, so I tried to swerve and um, I'm in the left lanes. So I realized I can't go this way because there's cars. So when I swerved back this way, I remember hitting the concrete wall. So I landed upside down in the left two lanes. Um, I flipped like three and a half times and I was trapped in my seatbelt. I guess some bystanders pulled over and they were trying to help me get out and they couldn't get me out. I guess when I'm stuck in my seatbelt, I was saying, um, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I gotta get out, I can't breathe. And so the officer cut me out of my seatbelt and help me get out. Police officer that helped me out, apparently they, um, they grade you, like um, how serious they think you are. At first I was a, a two, which I guess one is the worst. And he said that before Hemsy got there, he had downgraded me to a one because he thought I was gonna die. I don't remember just being overwhelmed with fear. There was, there was peace with me in the car. I had what's called a TBI, a traumatic brain injury. My brain was bleeding and swelling. I had head fractures, I had skull fractures and face fractures, a broken left scapula, road burn on my shoulder. This right here was just snapped. I said this right here was um, all fractured. I had subdural hematoma and epidural hematoma. There's an area on my lower back that was swollen and there was a knot there and I think it was the sciatic nerves that it was pushing on to where it was pain. It went all the way from your back down through each of your legs because the devil's like you're going to have chronic back pain and you're fighting those thoughts. They did different MRIs and stuff and they had said that it might take um, this kind of injury like up to a year for some of this stuff to get to where you know I'm that actually, I had um, the doctors had um, surgeries scheduled for me for the face fractures and also for my brain, and um, they had, they canceled them because um, I healed up so quick. Just all the swelling in my body was finally going down, and the swelling in my back went down at the same time, and that's when my back quit hurting too. One of my favorite things, like in Psalm 91, is you call to me and I'll answer you. I'll be with you in trouble. I'll deliver you, I'll honor you, I'll satisfy you with long life and show you my salvation. So I was going through and going, you, you did, you, I called to you, you were with me in trouble, you did deliver me, you did honor me, and you're satisfying me with long, good life and showing me your salvation. The things that I did have to believe for to heal up, most everything, honestly, by the time I had my wits about me, you know, God had already fixed a lot of it, but some of it I had to stand for. It's, it's important to know what pastors are supposed to have and be submitted to them so that when a time of need comes up, you know, they have that authority to pray over you. And I don't know, just thinking back, I was like, I'm so thankful for them. I mean, I have such confidence in them because they are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit and they know God's so good and they're so good. And um, for everybody at church, um, so I know that everybody was praying. And we have people here that aren't just well, pray and hope and see. I mean, they pray and get stuff done. They know that God hears and answers prayer. Everything, just looking back and how everybody, my boss at work, she was like, um, you know, don't worry about your job. Just take as long as you need and, and your job is here. And people at work um, going out of their way and doing stuff for me and actually helping to provide for me. People donated time at work. I was out of work 10 weeks. Well, I didn't have that much time built up, but I didn't miss a paycheck. You know, I, t I said all along the way, I will have nothing permanent from this wreck. I will have no permanent injuries or, you know, or damage. And, um, you know, he's, he's restored and fixed everything. And all the doctor visits that I had afterwards, I had to do all these follow-up visits. And all of the doctors, when they'd see my injuries, or some of them were ones that were from, you know, the emergency room and the hospital. And they're like, um, you know, you're very lucky. You know, you, you had, this is your one big lucky thing in your life. And um, I very nicely, like, you know, told all of them, no, God took good care of me. This was God. Everything that God does, everything he, he says, everything that when he's doing, he's always just trying so hard to get his goodness to us. And so um, that's just like, I'm like, wow, God, the devil took his best shot. 
and you said no, and I'm still here. And yeah, you know, that told me that just I'm like cool.